On the build up to the 2017 NFL draft, there's been a lot of talk about the strength of the draft class and the strength of the draft class in particular in certain areas. The running back class being viewed as really, really good. Uh, the secondary class, both corner and safety, being outstanding. And all of that is true. But one of the consistent themes that you'll hear about is how the offensive line class isn't very good. That this is a very weak offensive line class. And I have to say, based off of early evaluations of a few of the top talents in this draft, I would agree. And for my money right now, as it stands, based off of who I've graded so far, there's only one offensive lineman that even carries a first-round grade, and he barely carries a first-round grade. And he's a guy that I think might be best suited to play center in the National Football League, and that's the dude I'm about to talk about, Forrest Lamb. Hopefully I can get through this entire video without referencing to him as Forrest Gregg. Because, yes, Forrest Gregg being available in this draft at probably 80 years of age would be quite interesting to see how he would hold up in today's NFL. Uh, but when you look at Forrest Lamp, a lot of people gravitate to him because he had a decent workout at the Combine. He had what was perceived to be really, really good film in his Alabama game. And, and for the most part, it was. Well, you, you hear different narratives about Forrest Lamp. You hear some people talk about the fact that he's really, really good at tackle. And if his arms were longer, um, he could play tackle and play left tackle because he has the feet to play left tackle full time at the NFL level. And you would also hear some talk about, you know, even with the shorter arms, isn't it at least it worth a shot to try him at left tackle or even right tackle before you think about flipping him inside? Then you hear some narratives talking about how he is a guard. Some talk, narratives talk about how maybe he is even a center. So let me share just a little bit of insight in terms of what I think about Forrest Lamp and why I think he actually does project best to the center position at the NFL level. Now, in terms of his size, he's about six foot four, three hundred and nine pounds. So he's a little bit short. I've mentioned the lack of length in his arms. His arms are like thirty-one and a half inches, which is definitely not what you want on the outside at all. You get some of those longer edge rushers up into his body, and he just won't be able to contend with them at the NFL level. And that's just the way it is. His technique could be outstanding, and his feet could be magnificent, but to a certain degree, he got to have some length to play on the outside. Not saying it would be impossible, but it would be very, very different. And when you just look at him and you look at his frame, he just seems like a guy that's better suited to play offensive guard, and in my opinion, better projects even more so to play center. A dude that lifted 34 reps at the combine of 225 pounds, so he's got very good upper body strength, and at times that really shows on the film. Um, what doesn't show, though, always is great lower body strength. And at times I see a guy that can struggle to be a mauler in the running game, uh, like his upper body strength suggests that he should, because his lower body strength just isn't there. You know, it's like the dude that goes to the gym, and he's cut to hell from the waist and up, but when you look at him, he's chicken legs down below because he didn't bother working on his lower body at all to kind of balance things out. And that's kind of what I see on film from Forrest Lamp, a guy that in his run blocking, he's good at the seal blocking, anything that involves technique, he's good, borderline outstanding at. He's pretty good at getting to the second level, but he lacks that major strength in his lower body, that force, you know, that pure power down below to be able to drive people back and finish off blocks, pancake people. So to me, it kind of restricts even how much you would want to use them, let's say, in a power running scheme, because I'm not sure that he's going to be a great fit for it. He can granted get stronger in his lower body, but as the way it stands right now, he seems a better fit for some type of zone blocking scheme, some type of finesse type of scheme, um, seems to be where he's the best suited. He's pretty solid as a pass blocker. And that's one thing you did see with him playing on the outside, a very good initial punch, very good hand usage, the way he used Elias' his hand. I in particular liked playing on the left side, how he used his right hand to engage first before his left hand. It seemed to give him the leverage that he needed uh, to prevent guys from consistently going around the edge on him, especially with that lack of length. Again, hand usage is outstanding. One of the best linemen in this draft class in terms of how he utilizes his hands the way he uses his hands, the technique for using his hands, and he generates pretty good leverage even with that lack of length. I think he plays with a typical good knee bend and pad level. Um, sometimes he can get a little off kilter. He can be vulnerable to inside moves, but it's not something that showed up all the time. I don't think he's a great athlete. I think his footwork is NFL tackle caliber perhaps, 
But in terms of overall lateral athleticism and getting to the second level athleticism, to sometimes he was a little bit late. Uh, sometimes he just didn't get there at all. And I just don't know if he's the type of guy that you want playing in a lot of space at the NFL level because I just don't know that it's there. But his effort was pretty good, although sometimes I thought he could have showed a little bit more nastiness. Uh, I thought he could be a little bit better in terms of continuing and finishing off his blocks instead of just kind of engaging and locking onto somebody and then holding him in place. He was reliable, though, in his college career, made 51 starts in four years. Um, he was a guy that held up well against LSU in 2015 and even more so against Alabama in 2016. So when we talk about a guy coming from Western Kentucky before Slamp, one of the major critiques will be the level of competition. And it's, it's fair because he didn't face the absolute best college competition every single week. But at the same point in time, when he did face top-level college competition, I felt he showed well for himself, did pretty, pretty well, and really established himself as a first-round talent in this draft. Now, in terms of an NFL comparison, I think you'll often hear Zach Martin, somebody from Notre Dame who was a tackle that at the NFL level flipped inside to guard because his arms were too short and he became an all-pro. And I understand that type of comparison. I don't think Forrest Lamp is that type of talent. When I see Forrest Lamp, especially because I think he best projects to center at the NFL level, I see Cody White here, who was a second-round pick for the Bears in 2016 and had a pretty solid rookie year. Cody White here was a guy who played left tackle at Kansas State, but his arms were too short. He, was, he just wasn't long enough. He just wasn't big enough to play outside. So the Bears moved him all the way inside to center, which is ultimately be proven to be, I think, his best fit at the NFL level. And I see Forrest Lamp being a guy like that. Now, the center position, we could talk about left tackle and how important it is. And I think sometimes there is an overemphasis on, you know, this guy can play left tackle, but this guy can play right tackle. Y you know, when you watch, let's say, a Denver Broncos team on defense, and you've got a stud left tackle, but if Von Miller lines up on the other side of the ball 60% of the time, it doesn't matter how fucking good this guy is you've got to scrub over at right tackle, you're still going to get eaten alive. So sometimes I do think in today's NFL, the whole tradition of the, the right end always tends to be the quicker, more explosive, and better defensive end, and therefore the left tackle lining up against him logically makes sense. I just don't think that holds the same water that it used to. That's just me. But in terms of the tackle position, when you get past that, you know, to me, the center is the quarterback of that offensive line. They're the one that make the adjustments. They're the one that set the line calls. Uh, they're the first point of contact for the football even before the quarterback is. So when you talk about uh, the importance to a team and how often somebody touches the football or impacts what happens on the football field, it can be argued that in terms of importance, the center is just as important as anybody else in theory on the offensive side of the ball that isn't the quarterback because they're the first person to touch that ball every single time, and everything starts with them. So you can argue that if a guy grades out to a certain level that even playing center and not playing a premium tackle position, they are still worth a first-round pick. And in this draft, I feel... Forrest Lamp is being a guy that is worth a first-round pick. My final grade for him is a 90.5, so it's not like he's a, a top-five talent to me. In terms of his draft stock, though, this is where it could get interesting, in my opinion, is that as the draft comes along, it wouldn't be surprising to me to start hearing some top-15 and potentially top-10 talk for him. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not saying it should happen. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised if it did happen because of the lack of overall talent and depth of quality of talent in this offensive line class. There are going to be teams that are desperate for offensive line help. There are teams that are going to sit there and say, it is better to reach for this guy now because the next round he's not going to be there. Nobody close to him is going to be there. Furthermore, you're going to have a team like I think of somebody like the San Diego Chargers picking seventh. You know, At the end of the day, they probably don't go with somebody like a Forest Lamb, but you brought in an offensive-minded head coach who likes to run the football. You need to beef up your offensive front in front of Philip Rivers, in front of Melvin Gordon. So a guy like Forrest Lamb could see his draft stock artificially inflate because you have a new head coach that is trying to establish his way of doing things, establish some type of offensive identity. I equate it to being somewhat similar to what um, Jay Gruden did with the Redskins in drafting Brandon Scherf fifth, fifth overall in 2015. You know, up until about a week, week and a half before the draft, 
you know, you were crazy if you're talking about Brandon Scherf being a top five pick because he wasn't going to play left tackle because he was another one of those Iowa offensive tackles with short arms. He was going to play guard. So he might be a mid to late first round pick. And then all of a sudden, Bob's your uncle. What do you know? He's a top five guy. Um, when you look at Forrest Lamb, there's that potential there. I, I think he's a pretty safe bet no matter what that he will not fall out of round one. Will he be the first offensive lineman taken? Maybe, maybe not. Will he be the second or third? Very possible. I, I don't think he's any lower than the third drafted offensive lineman in this draft class behind maybe a Cam Robinson and a Garrett Bowles. And I think there's an outside chance, based off of the team, based off of the scheme, based off of the need, based off of the fit, that Forrest Lamp ends up being the first offensive lineman drafted in 2017. Granted, at the end of the day, isn't saying a whole lot. Because, again, my number one graded offensive lineman is a center, and he's barely a first-round grade at that. This really is not a good offensive line class at all.